Now even at this point, even though we've rotoscoped fairly carefully, it looks kind of false. And well that's purely because we're looking at a solid here and a lot more of its detail is visible than we want. What we really want to do is use this now to change the color of the eye in the background. And in fact, there's a couple of ways we could do that. One way would be to use a blending mode for the layer itself. The layer is currently set to blue, so we could hit the modes button down here to bring up our modes and track mat section, come to the normal blending mode and maybe go all the way down towards the bottom and choose color. What that will do is apply its color change to the layer beneath it. And in this case, it does a fair job, but it's a little bit too extreme. It's almost overly saturated in color and doesn't look realistic enough. The other thing is if we wanted to change the color of this eye now to pink, then we'd really have to go into the eye color solids original settings and change the layer itself to pink. I like a little bit more flexibility than this. So this is what I would do instead. Back up so we go back to normal blending mode and we can in fact close that whole column down again. Instead, come over into the switches and turn this layer into an adjustment layer. Even though we have masks on here that are rotoscoped, they are set to reveal a certain selection of pixels on that layer, motion blur and feather included, and any color changes we apply to this adjustment layer will apply to the eye underneath. So the simplest color change we can do is hue and saturation. So let's come up to the effect menu, go down to the color correction submenu, and let's go down and choose hue saturation. The effect controls window will open up over here. We'll simply click on the word colorize. That now applies the default reddish color to this as represented up here in the top of the palette. If we drop down our colorize hue wheel, we can now rotate through that and color the eye any color we want to from 360 degrees of hue. I wanted a blue, so I'm going to go somewhere around 200, maybe just a shade less than that. And then underneath, in order to vary the reality of this, you can adjust the saturation. So before, it appeared that the saturation was very high, somewhere around here, about 60 plus percent. And you can go obviously too far on that. However, more subtle adjustment is what's needed here. I'm going to bring this up to around 15 or 20 percent. That's pretty much all it needs to give us a very realistic color change here. If we do a quick round preview of this composition, we can see as we build through a nice blink, which takes over now with our adjustment layer, motion blur included. And even if those masks weren't 100 percent accurate, you cannot tell the difference here. This looks like a real color shift in the eye, which is controlled by the blinking motion in and out. So a really nice effect simply taken care of with one adjustment layer.